Welcome back to our monthly guest speaker series. Today we have Bart Smith joining us for ADUs and I'll be introducing him here in a second. My name is Jara. I am the sales rep here at Rancho Santa Fe Heritage Escrow Office. A quick shout out to my co-hosts and fellow sales rep starting down in Balboa. John, good morning. Good morning, Jared. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Curry. I cover the Balboa Park office. We are in the same building as the Mr. A's restaurant, if you guys are familiar. Um, we have three great escrow officers here, beginning with Debbie Howe, who covers bulk and business escrows. And then on the residential and commercial side, we have Gianna Pino and our branch manager, Donna Hamilton. Fantastic. And up in Carlsbad, we have the beautiful Marissa Tour. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for being here with us this morning. Yes, I'm Marissa Tour with the Carlsbad Heritage Escrow Branch here off Mount Palomar Airport Road. And I have two lovely escrow officers that I represent that most of us all know. And if you know them, you love them. Holly Burt, she's my escrow officer and branch manager. And Anella Mirjar Lindo, she's here as well. So thank you guys for being here today with us. Thanks, Marissa. And Finally, we have uh, Tamara up in our Temecula office. Good morning. Aloha, everybody. Yes, I am in the Temecula office. Um, we are located in um, right on the corner of Yanez. And um, why do I always stump on Rancho California Road? I don't know why, <laughs> but I always do. So anyway, it's a great location right on the corner. And we have wonderful Carol Hankey here as our branch manager and escrow officer. Um, her wonderful team. We have Chanel Jones and her wonderful team. And anyways, they're, they're amazing. Everybody's working really, really hard for you guys right now as you guys are out there pounding the pavement. So we appreciate the business. I also want to introduce um, our Irvine office. We have an Irvine office and Janet Tilbury is there. She um, is the branch manager as well as Holly Jessick as our escrow officer. And I've had the pleasure of working with Tara Vo and she's an escrow officer, works really hard as well too. So they're they're, they're there for you guys, too, in the Irvine area. Don't forget us. Thanks, Tamara. And I don't know if we got, gave a shout out to Escondido and Alicia Bagby. I've known Alicia from way back in the day. She's fantastic. Yes, Alicia Bagby and Kelly Panero. Oh, yeah, Kelly's there, too. Yeah. She did my refinance last year. Um, awesome. Well, first, um, I just wanted to introduce all of our you know, fellow co-hosts. And the star of the show today is Bart Smith. He's the owner and architect of DZN Partners. And he was born and raised in Point Loma. So he is a San Diegan through and through. Um, and I also learned that he's a fellow Rotarian of mine. He was a past president of Del Mar and Solana Beach. I'm over in the Rancho Santa Fe Club, so. Oh, great. Yeah, and you also are a member of Encinitas Chamber of Commerce, which helps greatly in your business of ADUs and design and consulting. Welcome so much, Bart. We're so excited to hear you today. All right, thank you. Are you ready for me to start talking about ADUs? <laughs> Yeah, let's get going. I okay. just wanted to let everybody know we'll do questions at the end of the meeting. Um, so go ahead and if you have a question, type it in the chat box or in the Q and A's and we will get them, get to them. Um, and with that, we'll go for it, Bart. All right, so I'm gonna talk about ADUs and then I have some different projects that we're working on right now or ones that are completed that I'll kind of just pepper throughout the uh, talk so you're not just listening to me drone on. Um, let's see, so. Oops, let's see. You should be able to see a screen with some images and stuff now. Yeah, yeah we see that. Cool. So um, basically an ADU is what people call a granny flat or an additional home on your lot. Uh, and an ADU can have a kitchen in it, which is unique. Uh, if it's just a guest house, then it can't have a kitchen. 
ADUs have, uh, can be detached from the house. They can be attached. They can be one story. Uh, garage conversions are allowed by state law. Over the garage ADUs, I do quite a few of those. That's what this one depicts. It's a, there's an existing garage there. Uh, and then we built this ADU with a little porch off the side of it. Uh, you know, and it has a little architectural flair to it. Um, and they can even be two story if they meet the main building setbacks. So I'm doing one in Cardiff by the sea right now that the house has about 13 feet of space. So we're doing a two story unit ADU there uh, to get some views over the top of uh, Cardiff Seaside Market. Um, typically an ADU has a great room, a kitchen. People really love a laundry facility. You can't go, even the smallest ADUs, they want some way of doing laundry. Uh, they have bedrooms and bathrooms. A lot of the smaller ones have lofts for storage and for sleeping. And typically an ADU needs to be separated from the house with the one hour barrier and no doors to the house. Um, so they can be attached, but they can't be connected if that makes sense. Uh, there's also something called a junior ADU, which in the lingo is a J ADU. And that is usually attached to the house, like what well, always is attached to the house. And that's a conversion of existing living space or garage to a, what's it called a junior ADU. And that can have a door to the home. It's supposed to have a small kitchenette in it. Uh, it usually has a kitchenette, like some kind of living room, a bedroom and a bathroom. And typically that one shares utilities with the home. So it's kind of like an enhanced room you're renting out. Um, and so those are kind of the different ADUs and J ADUs you can use. Um, the parameters of an ADU, basically what ADUs have been around, I mean, I did some in the 90s and the early 2000s, but there was a lot of fees involved. But in 2017, the state of California really loosened up the ADU rules. Um, and they were, if, you, if your city's rules didn't meet the state rules, the state rules trumped. So um, immediately at that point, a lot of the cities were crafting their own ordinances. And um, it seems like every two years now we get new rules. So the ones I'm going over now are maybe different than ones that I talked about a couple years ago. Um, so the rules are always changing and updating. So it's hard to be an expert. And um, so we do our best, but every city has their own rules too. So it makes it a little interesting. I've changed the picture up a little bit. This is a um, two bedroom ADU we're working on right now up in off Lucadia Boulevard. And uh, I was gonna show you the, so the, there's like the floor plan. So this is a two bedroom design almost with a master suite en suite here and then a nice big living space here, and then a secondary bedroom up here with a shared bath for the living space and a deck. And uh, it's on a little lot off of um, Lucadia Boulevard in the area that's called Tortilla Flats in the local lingo. And um, they happen to have a big raised area in the back for this ADU to go on. And then we're gonna add some stairs. So it really will have a private feel. So um, let's go back to the, uh, make it a little, yeah. And so uh, let's go, yeah. So most cities have created their own ADU ordinances. All are different, but based on the state rules. Some cities have even waived almost all the fees. And that includes Encinitas, San Diego County and Oceanside. Um, some require coastal permits, which can add a few months to the process. Carlsbad, if you're in their coastal zone, and City of San Diego. Most allow an ADU and a J ADU on the same property. And um, so you can end up with three units on your property, and that's pretty sweet. Uh, and you can, the only one that has some rental restrictions is the J ADU. If you have a J ADU, either the house or the Main, ha main house or the JADU has to be owner occupied. Um, and then the state has done quite a few um, restrictions and 
you're not like the city can't make you do public improvements if you put an ADU in. Most of the time, you don't have to do underground um, utilities. Um, now, ADUs are allowed in residential and mixed use zones. So, without they're supposed to not require a discretionary permit. The only one I know that is the coastal permit. Um, so, it's supposed to be ministerial, which means just a building permit. And um, so, I'm working on a little project at Second and J Street. It was uh, two commercial suites two residential apartment condos, and then we had a garage underneath. Well, the, when the rules changed, that garage became an ADU. So um, that's the example of a mixed use property uh, having an ADU. Uh, also just north of Lou's Records in Lucadia, Lou Russell has a property he owns and we're turning a portion of it into it's staying commercial and then we're building an ADU behind that and then a full residence above. So that's another example of a mixed use property um, having an ADU. Uh, so the size allowed is anywhere from around 200 square feet to 1200 square feet. Um, some cities can limit it to a thousand, but that's the smallest large one you can limit to. And the state has an 800 square foot like absolute maximum, which basically means that regardless of lot coverage and floor area ratio and other limiting factors, you're allowed an 800 square foot ADU. So like in Solana Beach, where they have the very tight floor area ratios, uh, we're doing a project on Acacia and you're limited to 2000 square feet for the house. But if you add an ADU to the process, you're immediately allowed 2800 square feet of living space. So they're really, the cities, the state incentivizing these ADUs a lot. Um, setbacks have been reduced to four feet on the rear and sides. That is a newer thing from about 2019. So that means um, you can build that ADU in the backyard. And that's uh, in the past, cities weren't allowing you to build in the setbacks, but now you can. And that includes attached or detached. So if it's attached to the house, the ADU can still have a four foot side and rear setback. So it's been used quite a bit by my clients. Um, some cities like city of San Diego allow you to a zero rear and side setback, but they only allow a 30 foot length in that, pier, in, that in that part of the yard, but that's still pretty nice. Um, parking has been completely waived for ADUs in most cases. Sometimes you have to provide one space, but it's usually just a space in the driveway, which most people already have. Um, um, and then, so here's, a, I just take a little break. Here's one I've got going in Oceanside, and this has actually been framed and it's getting pretty far along. This actually, the owner really went for it and it has a basement and has two stories plus a roof deck and it has some lofts. So it's really kind of a wild, project. Uh, this is like the extreme ADU uh, and it's right near the, if you want to see it, it's right near the Union Bank off of the 101 in, in Oceanside. And um, you can see it's got like multiple levels and there's some uh, elevations, uh, you know, so you have like a basement, which was mostly storage, and then a second floor, a uh, first floor that's kind of a living space. And then a second floor that's another living space with bedrooms and then a whole roof deck on top. And he does get some motion views from the roof deck and from the uh, second floor. So it's a quite an interesting project. Uh, he's an airline pilot, so he's got big plans for uh, renting it out when he's on, on, his, on the job and that kind of thing. Um, height. Uh, if you're using the reduced four foot setbacks, then your height is limited to 16 feet. Um, if you're meeting the main building setbacks like this one does, you can go to the main building um, heights. So in Oceanside, that was, I think 30 feet. And then you're allowed this little crow's nest at the top for the door to the stairs in Oceanside. Um, yeah, and then you can build an ADU over the garage. If you have an existing garage, it doesn't matter where the garage is on your property. 
if it's a foot from the property line, you can build an ADU on top of it. And um, another thing about garages is, is you can convert a garage on your house to an ADU or a junior ADU and not provide additional parking. So that's something the state's mandated. Um, one of the nice things recently is impact fees. State has made most cities waive impact fees. So that means any kind of like sewer or water fee, transit fee, because a lot of the cities consider ADUs as new residential dwellings. So in the past, like Oceanside would have 15 to $20,000 worth of impact fees that now they're not charging. They can charge impact fees if they're over 750 square feet, but it has to be proportional. So usually it's less than an actual single family residence. And the newer rules that they pass as a law is HOAs can't um, prohibit ADUs and JADUs in communities that have HOAs and CCNRs. So I'm working in a couple ADUs in the Carlsbad in the Aviara area where they're just forced to approve them because the state law says you can't not have ADUs or you can't prohibit them. Um, the only thing of rental restrictions on ADUs, they're supposed to be 30 days or greater. So, um, and that is no short-term rentals. Um, and then I said before, owner occupancy is required when you have a JADU. Uh, now, a lot of folks are building a little bit larger ADU and then they're renting out the main house as a short-term rental. So there's always a will or a way. And um, people do rent out ADUs short-term. They just can't put them on Airbnb websites because cities are monitoring those. But as long as you do it by word of mouth, you're good. But um, that's just a little aside. Um, now I was gonna break into like um, another little project to look at. This is one we're doing on Union Street, just north of um, the YMCA. And um, it's a long, thin unit with um, actually three bedrooms a kitchen living space pushed up against the four foot rear and about four foot from the sides too. And um, the owners recently bought the house and now they're fixing up the landscaping and doing this project. So there's the ADU in the bottom. The house needs some TLC in the future and we'll probably get to that at the second phase, but uh, this is going through the city of Encinitas for approvals right now. Very, a pretty modern looking item. Most cities aren't making you make the ADU match the house unless you really want to. Um, so this has just a simple shed roof, very modern, limited windows facing the house and the yard, and um, kind of a, you know some use of cement plaster, board and bat, some natural materials. And um, yeah, I was getting into that next. This is my next I was kind of segue going to talk about utilities for um, ADUs. Uh, fire sprinklers are only required if the main home has them, so that's a good thing. Uh, every once in a while, the fire departments will figure out a way for something to have to have fire sprinklers um, besides that rule, because sometimes you just don't battle. Uh, solar panels are required at detached ADUs, so that's why this ADU shows solar panels. Now they can be a solar, if you have a solar system on your main house, you, you can show how adding some panels will cover this ADU and you can use your existing system. And that happens quite a bit. Um, but if the ADU is attached in any way, it doesn't require solar panels because then it can be considered an addition to the house. Um, with water and sewer, typically we tap into the existing home lines uh, we don't add a water meter uh, and we don't add sewer laterals. It's just too cost prohibitive. Um, septic can be a problem if you're on septic because uh, it's how many bedrooms you're adding and you might have to add a whole new septic system or enlarge your tank on your existing one. Um, electrical, you're getting a lot of uh, variety on electrical. Some people just tap into their existing panel and put a little sub panel on the ADU. Some folks want a whole separate meter, which is allowed. And some people will um, 
dub, you know, double it up and have uh, put new meters on for both house and the unit. Um, gas, um, typically we tap, tap into the existing gas lines. They do require me to do like a gas line diagram. Um, I'm afraid from what I'm listening to in Encinitas and other cities that the ability to use gas for these is gonna go away in the next two to five years. Uh, gas may be going away from residential use at some point in the future completely. Uh, Encinitas is doing their own climate action plan right now and they're gonna allow gas meters to still exist, but mostly they're gonna limit it to uh, like gas fireplaces and cooking ranges and that kind of thing. Um, typically water heating on these ADUs has to be a separate water heater. It's a gas tankless or an electric hybrid heat pump. And the electric hybrid heat pump uh, water heater is actually a tank with a little uh, heat pump unit. So it's a tank with a little like suitcase that you get when you're doing your space heating with an electric split system heat pump, which, which the next, the ADU has to have a separate heating and cooling system, even if it's attached to the house. So most of the time it's either a gas wall heater or if you're doing uh, air conditioning, it's a four, it's an electric split system heat pump like by Mitsubishi or Tagaki. Um, now the types of ADUs, I do quite a few custom ADUs that are um, that are custom for the lot with meets the owner's desires and you know can be L shaped or like this one long and skinny or other things like that. Another option is a lot of the cities have come up with standard units. And this is the standard units that I put together for the city of Encinitas that have been around for a couple of years. Um, I have a studio, I have a one bedroom, I have a two bedroom that's kind of disabled accessible. And then I have this uh, three bedroom unit. Uh, this is 224, 499, which keeps you away from paying school fees. And then you have the uh, 990, this one is, and then this is 1199. Um, quite a few of these have been built. Um, I probably don't even know how many. Um, so that's called a PRADU or permit ready ADU. I'm working on expanding with the San Diego Housing Commission for more of these permit ready ones. They call them permit ready, but they still take a few months to get through the city. But the idea is that each one of these plans you see, I have an entire set of working drawings that all you have to add is uh, a site plan to check off a few boxes as what materials you want to use and you can submit it to the city. So it does save time because a custom ADU designed by an architect is probably anywhere from eight to $16,000 for the architect plus structural engineering and energy calculations, maybe a soils report where these have kind of been pre-approved. So. Um, if I'm helping you with the, the site plan and other things, it may only be like two to 5,000 for, for using one of these. And that includes processing through the city. Um, the, the newest thing with the city of Encinitas and, a lot, and the state is um, the, the uh, multifamily uh, rules, which allow um, an ADU to be converted from existing non-livable space into an ADU. So example, if you have 12 unit apartment building and it has garages, you can add, you can take those three of those garages or 25% and create ADUs out of the garages without having to provide additional parking. So you could take a 12 unit apartment building, turn it into 15, um, for an example. And the other thing that they allow with multifamily is if you have the room, you can have two detached ADUs with the 25% attached or reusing of non-livable space. So like I have a du uh, duplex I'm working with the owner on, on Melba by Ocean Knoll, and it's a duplex. He's got quite a big backyard. So he is putting two detached ADUs, which is allowed on a multifamily property. He's gonna end up with four units from a duplex and he's not doing it, but he could do the garages on that and turn up with five units from a duplex, um, which is pretty sweet if you're keeping the property for uh, an investment property and renting it out. Uh, because um, 
these ADUs in the coastal areas rent for a pretty significant amount of money. Um, and then uh, they do allow manufactured homes for ADUs uh, in most jurisdictions. And then um, just the last few things and I'll be opening up for questions. Uh, ADUs aren't really super cheap to build. Um, they're typically at least $300 a foot because you're squeezing in so many assets that a house has, but only in 224 or 499 square feet. So uh, they can be pretty expensive to build. Um, so yeah, I mean, typical, the 499 unit is anywhere from 100 and because of current costs of materials, 140, 200,000. But this 499 unit, currently I've got a couple clients that are renting it out between 2,500 and $3,000 a month in Encinitas. So um, you can recover your costs in five to seven years and then it's gravy after that. Um, Time-wise, uh, if you're doing a custom one, it can be anywhere from six to eight months to get to the point where you're building. If it's a pre-approved one, it still goes through a process. So that's usually around four months to get those approved. And then construction on these ADUs is anywhere from three to nine months. Um, yeah. And then um, we're seeing, this is a uh, example of a property that's multifamily. It actually has an apartment building you can't see in these drawings um, off to the left here. And then we're taking the main house, which was there, it's five units, we're adding an ADU on top. And that was allowed by uh, the state laws. So you can kind of see it's, it's gonna enhance, enhance it quite greatly. Um, we're even seeing a lot of spec homes now that are having an ADU just standard in the spec, with the spec home. It just makes sense because people are like asking about it. So this is one we're working on on Colony Terrace above near the Pancake House area. Um, that's in its, you know, we're going for the design approval pretty soon. And um, let's see. So, you know, you've got a nice custom home, but we're, we've got it designed with almost like a junior ADU. We're not gonna permit it as a junior over here. And then you've got like, two bedrooms with a nice master suite in the office, very large, great room. But then underneath all this, because of the slope of the lot, we have a nice one bedroom ADU that um, has a separate entrance, separate everything, separate parking space. So, you know, it can either be a rental or it could be for uh, one of their parents or children or whatever. So um, we're seeing that with our developer clients quite a bit. And I think I've shown you most of the, um, pro oh yeah, yeah, I did. So let's, I did have um, just a few photographs of projects. Um, you know, here's a, this is a 360 square foot ADU. It's got a little kitchen. Uh, we did a loft in this one. So it has a really nice um, living space up here. It's got a bathroom with laundry and all that in it. And it's designed to match the main house. So it has that kind of the Spanish look with the same tails and everything. Um, and then, you know, this is the entrance. It's in the backyard. It really was a nice look. Here's another smaller ADU, 290 square feet. It's got its own porch. Um, it's got high ceilings, a nice kitchen, a living space. Um, then it's got a loft again up above. Those seem to be quite popular to get some storage space and have a little guest space for people to hang out. It's got a little bedroom area down here. So it's not large. And then the bathroom is um, got the no, no curb shower, a nice vanity and the showers over on the closets over here. Uh, this is a slightly shrunken 990 Encinitas Prado. Uh, kind of in the barn modern look. It was under construction when I took these pictures, but you can see nice vaulted ceilings. This is real close to the beach. Uh, here's uh, a 1200 square foot Prado from Encinitas. Uh, let's see, and there's another view of it. So that's um, fit in somebody's side yard over by, um, well, it's on Cale Pensamenitos, if you can say that. So that's just a few pictures of them being built. Um, 
And so let's see. If we have questions, uh, whoops, you don't see, need to see my email there. <laughs> How do I, oh, there we go. So I'll stop sharing my screen, but I can always go back and look at things if people have questions. So that's kind of my presentation. I hope I made it somewhat interesting. If, any, if there are any questions, Shara, I'm up, open for those. Yes, Bart, I do have a few okay. questions for you. So we'll just go through and answer a few of them. Sure. Um, what are City of San Diego front yard setbacks? Well, it depends on the zone you're in. Um, those can be anywhere from as low, small as 15 up to 25. Um, they have a, they have something online where you can enter your, if you put city of San Diego um, zoning in your Google search, they will take you to a little um, web-based web thing where you can put in your address and it'll tell you what your zone is. So you can usually find your, your setbacks. Um, use a lot of San Diego's in the RS zones. And so you, typically those are anywhere from 15 to 20. And I have put ADUs in front yards where they're like an L-shaped house and they have like a little walkway past the garage. And so we kind of put the ADU on the other side of the garage and can fit a three to 500 square foot ADU in the front yard, so. Perfect, thank you. Sure. Um, have you built any in the Covenant of Rancher Santa Fe? Not yet, but Not they are allowed. <laughs> um, what do you charge for your services? Well, it depends on the size of the ADU and what's going on with it. Um, if, it's a, if you're able to use the clean pre-approved plans and you just need me to do like a site plan and process it. That's usually in the three to 6,000 range. Um, and then uh, if it's a full custom, it just depends on the size. Um, a, 50, a 1,200 square foot ADU is almost like designing a, a new house. So that probably is in the range of, I don't know, giving you ranges 16 to 20,000. But if it's a more reasonable size one, under 1,000 to like 500, it's less than that. Um, now that doesn't include the structural engineering and the energy calculations we have to do, but those are a fraction of those costs usually. Um, yeah, and we'll provide your information at the end as well. So yeah. I, you know, I have to say I am re really busy. I don't think there's an architect around that's not. <laughs> so I do have some lead time to get to projects. I just can't start a project if somebody calls me today. I won't be starting it for a month or two, actually. So, okay, good to know. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. What is the average price to, oh, to get the ADU permitted? Yeah, I mean, it just depends on what the size and the shape and the, and the community it's in. Um, like, for, for example, I, like, just like 500 square foot Prado that Encinitas has, um, I'll just say like one that recently finished it. So it was pretty much a standard unit and they got their own uh, site plan drawn up. So I think the site plan drop for them was like $750. I think my fee was like $3,800. Um, then they had to pay the, so that all in all was maybe about six to 8,000 for, a, to get one of those 499 square foot produce approved and permitted. Uh, unfortunately, Encinitas is kind of backed up. So it took like five months to get the thing approved because it took city four months to approve it. When you go through the city, uh, most cities, they want a covenant that's recorded with the county recorder. And it's to the benefit of the homeowner because that then when they go to sell says they have a legal ADU and that they didn't do it without permits. Um, so and they assign addresses. Well, getting that address and the covenant all taken care of, that's what takes the months of time to get it approved. Uh, and even though these have been pre-approved by the city, they still find ways to give me comments that I have to respond to, so. Thank you. Uh, next question, if there is a public, oh, is there a public database where we can see how many pre-approved ADU applications have been submitted and how many have been built in San Diego County? I'm not aware of any database like that. 
Um, Jeff Plagelman is the ADU coordinator at the city of Encinitas. And I've just never called him to ask him or find out if there is such a database. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there is. The cities play it kind of close to the best. There are people that aren't advocates of ADUs because of the parking issues and the fact that they think their neighborhoods are gonna get crowded. So um, they have all these great programs and they don't charge fees, but they publicize them just a little, but not too much, if that makes sense. Yes. They don't want a backlash, basically. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Um, how do ADUs, so how does an ADU affect property taxes? You will find that um, just like any other improvement to a property, the assessor is going to send you a paper, some paperwork. Usually it's on green paper. It's always been on light green paper that you'll get after the work is done. And then they'll ask the homeowner to um, fill out that paperwork and tell them how much they spent. Uh, and then they will make a ruling and you'll get um, a supplemental tax bill because um, you've added value. It's For me, I put an ADU in my backyard and I spent 100,000, I told the assessor 80,000 and they increased my property taxes uh, by they added supplemental of 20,000. So that's what they felt the added value was. So I ended up with a supplemental tax bill for a couple of years and then they kind of rolled it into my tax bill. Um, some Sewer agencies will add a 0.8 uh, EDU. So then the sewer bill may go up every month, every year on that shows up on your taxes. So um, I'm sure that my clients that put the 1200 square foot ADU on and they tell the tax assessor they spent 300,000 or 350,000 to build it, taxes go up a little bit more than mine, which is only 300 square feet. So it's all relative. But I have never heard anyone tell me that they got completely reappraised. It's always just a supplemental addition of value. So, okay, thank you. Let's see. Next question: How much for a consultation to discuss feasibility and look at the site? Uh, if it's just over the phone, there's no charge. And honestly. I'm not really allowed by state law to charge for a consultation because I have to have a written agreement to charge a fee. So there's no fee for a consultation, but consultations, it's a time factor, like how far in the future I'm scheduled that I can actually do a consultation. Uh, you're, and uh, I hate to say this, I'm very service oriented, but people have to be somewhat persistent to to get me to work with them right now because there's just so much coming at our firm and we're just a six person firm. So, um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> we're more, we've got so many different projects. We're doing custom homes. We're doing a lot, some commercial work. The ADUs are um, great. They're, they're good teaching for people that work for me. Um, and I like doing them, but they can be a blessing and a curse because they, there's, I can get, a dozen calls a week about people that want to put an ADU on and I just don't have the bandwidth to uh, deal with all that, <laughs> mm -hmm. honestly. So kind of a good problem to have, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Did you say, oh, I had a question about this as well. So did you say that under 400 square feet, you do not require the school fees? Is that a rule by the city? That, that is a state mandated rule that's been around for a long time, 499 square feet. So if you're at 499, there's no school fee. If you're at 500, there's a, a one-time school fee, which right now in the Encinitas area is like $4.10. So if it's 499, there's zero school fee. If there's if it's 500, there's a $2,000 school fee. Now it's a one-time fee, but um, it can be significant if you're doing 1,200 square feet, so. Okay. Next question, what is the process slash fees of permitting a non-permitted converted garage by a previous owner? Um, I have done a few of those. Uh, not my favorite project, but I've helped out some friends that live nearby and that kind of thing. Um, and I, I know the, Encinitas is kind of like my bullseye of my zone because that's where my office has been for 30 years. 
uh, in Encinitas, you have to draw it up like it's not there. So it has to have a site plan, a floor plan, elevations, cross sections, foundation plan, roof framing plan. And then you have to go through the whole process of the four departments, fire, building, engineering, and planning, looking at it and approving it. And then when you get to that point where they've approved it, it becomes quite simple. Um, usually it's a single visit by an inspector. It's a letter from the architect saying he certifies or she certifies it meets code. It's maybe an electrical uh, contractor or engineer saying the electrical panel is correct. And maybe a second visit from the, uh, from the inspector and then a sign off by the city. Um, Encinitas has always been pretty relaxed on that kind of stuff because they were county for so many years. And so that's what I know about Encinitas. Other cities might be the same way or they might make you open up the walls to show them things. It's, um, that's why I rarely do any non-permitted work outside of Encinitas because it can be a can of worms. But Encinitas seems to be more reasonable with the whole trying to legalize a garage that's been converted. But I've done about three of those in the past couple of years. Yeah. Okay. Do ADUs and JADUs need to go through the art jury in Rancho Santa Fe? I would say yes. Okay. Maybe if the JADU doesn't make any changes to the exterior of the structure, they might waive the requirement to go through the art jury. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I found Rancho Santa Fe and the county to be extremely difficult to work in during COVID. I've got a little house remodel, well, decent house remodel that we started in early 2019 and I'm still struggling to try to get the permits for it. And we're almost two years in. So that's, it's kind of bad right now. <laughs> um, circling back to the question earlier, who did you say was the contact in the city of Encinitas um, that might know a little bit more about the pre-approved ADU applications? His name is Jeff Plagelman. And you can, get, it's J, not a J, G-E-O-F-F. -F. I think it's P-L-A-G-E-M-A-N-N. -N. He's the planner that kind of initiated the whole Pradu process. If you type in Encinitas Pradu to your Google search, you'll, you'll take it right to the city website where you can read about the system and the way it works. And you can download the full set of plans. There's another architect, Yvonne St. Pierre, that has four sets of plans that you can download, studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom. Hers are more um, modern, kind of a modern barn shed look. Um, so, and those are all available on the Encinitas website, so. Okay, thank you. And then I'll jump over to the chat screen. We have a few, few questions in here. Um, and yes, I will mention, um, as most of you have probably seen, we will have this available um, typically about a week after. So this is being recorded, so we will automatically send this out to you. Um, okay, next question. Do ADUs in the coastal zone need the Coastal Commission approval? In the coastal zone in San Diego County, um, a lot of the coastal cities have their own local coastal plan. So like in Oceanside um, and Encinitas, their local coastal plan years ago included ADUs as a allowed by right. So you don't need a coastal permit like an Oceanside or Encinitas. Now in Carlsbad, they have a, their own local coastal plan, but they didn't get the ADUs included and an allowed by right element. So you do need a coastal permit from the city of Carlsbad if you're in the coastal zone. And you'd be surprised how much of Carlsbad is in the coastal zone. Most of Aviara is. A lot of the stuff around the lagoons is. So you'll need a minor coastal permit from city of Carlsbad. Solana Beach wants to have a local coastal plan, but there's lawsuits that are not allowing it. So yes, you'll need a coastal permit from the city, from the Coastal Commission for an ADU. It may be a, it may not be a full coastal permit. It might be a waiver or an exemption or something like that, but you have to make the application. Uh, and then city of San Diego right now, they require a coastal permit if you're in the coastal zone for a, um, for an ADU. And it's probably the only discretionary permit that the state just can't wiggle out of. 
the coastal per, coastal commission is so powerful that they just they'd like to pull it out of needing a coastal permit, but they can't. So um, that's my answer. I don't know much about south of San Diego, like Chula Vista, the national city, if they require coastal permits. And it can add months to your processing time. Uh, next question, if I have a 1,350 square foot main structure, how big of a detached ADU can I legally build in Poway? I don't know all the rules in Poway, but I believe you could build the, most cities are allowing you, the only time you can't build 1,200 square feet is if your house is less than 1,200 square feet, then they make, you can build to the size of the house. So I've had to do a few of those where the house was 940 square feet and the ADU was 935 or something like that. Um, some cities have adopted 1,000 as their maximum. So it would either be 1,000 or 1,200, but I think based on that size of 1,300, you're fine either at 1,000 or 1,200, so. And Bart, is that the same if you're building onto like a JD? J yeah, if you're building the ADU attached, a lot of the cities have done a 50% rule. So if like, if you had 1,400 square feet and you wanted to attach your ADU, then 700 would be the maximum. If it's a J ADU, the maximum is 500 square feet, so. Okay, um, let's see, back to, okay, how are ADUs income tax and how does an ADU affect property taxes? I kind of explained about the property taxes that they just still add supplemental tax bills to you based on the value they believe you've added to your property. Um, well, income tax is like if you're making money off the rent, obviously you're making income, so you've got to report it and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But since it's not a short-term rental, 30 days or more, usually you don't have to, you know, there's no TOT tax or anything like that. Like if you've got a short-term rental in Encinitas, you've got to pay hotel tax and that kind of thing, but not with these ADUs, so. Okay, um, can a property have an ADU and a JADU is it one or the other? Also attached to that question, um, can you all have two ADUs on the same property? Um, so a lot of the cities will allow a junior ADU and an ADU, most of them, but you have to check with your local city. Some only allow one or the other. Um, the only time I know that you, so they definitely, am, I'm doing quite a few properties that have an ADU and a JADU in Encinitas for sure. I've got two or three that have been completed. Um, the only time you can add two ADUs on is if you have multifamily already, like a duplex or a triplex. They allow you to um, add, you know, add, if there's garages, you can turn those into ADUs. Then you can also add two detached ones. So I don't know if you drive along Regal, where the an Encinitas past the Carl's Jr. towards the storage facility, you'll see on the right past uh, Melba, there was a duplex with two two car garages, and right now those are being converted each to an ADU. So they're taking a fourplex to a sixplex by converting the two garages. So you know you, it's happening all over. Uh, if you're an investment person that wants to invest in properties, you need to find duplexes with lots of yard space because then you can maybe grow it to five units or six units and in the coast go from a $8,000 a month rental to a $24,000 a month rental income, you know, because even a studio is a couple thousand dollars. It's, it's pretty incredible, so. Yeah. Okay, what would you estimate your price per square foot is for your ADUs when they're based off your produce? Um, you mentioned the 500 square foot ADU is roughly 150 to 200,000. So is it somewhere between three to 400 a foot? Yeah, the, all those statements in that questions are exactly correct. Um, I did have one owner that found somebody that was going to do it for 120,000, but it took us a couple months more to get the permits. And the contractor came back and said, no, I'll keep my labor costs the same, but it's $145,000 now. So between twenty and twenty-five thousand dollars in um, additional costs, just from 
January, February up till May of this year. So yeah, I would say typically 300 to $400 a square foot. Um, most contractors will tell you that that's dependent on, you can't really put all the utility connections in there. That's for the ADU. If you've got a 200 foot long trench you have to build to get your sewer to it or something like that, that's a whole nother ball game. That could be a, another, the utilities could be another anywhere from 10 to 25,000 to get water, sewer, electric, and gas to the ADUs. Okay. Do you help with finding the financing? Yes, I have a really good friend that does financing um, and she'd be more than willing to help anybody with the financing. So, and I'm sure a couple of my clients that I've done ADU fours are also mortgage brokers as well. So um, if you contact me, I can set you up with somebody that knows all about the financing of them. Or if you want to send me that information as well, we'd be happy to share it. Okay. Sounds good. Um, yeah. And uh, this uh, young lady, well, she's my age. She also knows how to do reverse mortgages where you can use the reverse mortgage to finance your ADU and that kind of thing. So there's lots of different ways to do it. So um, yeah, I'll send you her information. Wonderful, thank you. So a few more questions here. We'll go, we have about nine more minutes left okay. here. Um, Bill Gates has developed and deployed toilets in other countries that do not require septic. Do you have any knowledge of that possibility here? Yeah, I mean, we, I've done a couple ADUs that had to actually have pumps, maturation pumps for their sewer because they were downhill. Um, I mean, there's composting toilets, obviously, and other things. I just haven't submitted them to the city to ask to see if they would give me permission to do it. Um, a lot of the cities are looking at well, Encinitas has a gray water ordinance. If you do a new house in Encinitas, unless you can show that it's on a very small lot, um, you have to do gray water piping, pre-piping, so that your sinks and, and other things, the gray water can be put into your yard uh, as irrigation water. Um, they aren't requiring that for ADUs yet. It might happen at some point. Um, but yeah, I just don't, I haven't researched a con you know, that kind of toilet and whether it's allowed. Um, okay. You probably still have to have some kind of tank in the yard to collect stuff that would have to be pumped, I would guess. Yeah. Okay, what is required to create a site plan and a landscape plan? I've never had to do a landscape plan for an ADU. They kind of are exempt so far. I'm sure if you did one in the association, Rancho Santa Fe, but might probably need a landscape plan. Um, if it's a very simple lot, like 50 by 100 or 60 by 100, usually an architect can do the measuring required. If it gets any more complicated, then you'd have to hire a surveyor um, for anywhere from 1000 to four thousand dollars to get a survey done with uh, you know the different buildings placed on the site um, if it's a flat lot you may not need topography so that's where it kind of the range is big because if you do need topography because you're on a slope lot then it, it can be in the four to five thousand dollar range and surveyors um, typically if it, there's no record of survey or corner record they might try to get you to do that too so it just depends um, so that's what it takes to get a site plan. So, and then those, everyone's impacted time-wise right now. Um, so a survey could take a couple months to get completed because of the lead time. So, yeah. Bart, you mentioned um, in one of the projects earlier that um, you're building like kind of below the houses as an option for those uh -huh. spec homes. Um, what what kind of um, you know, hillside, can you build on? Mostly, you can build on a hillside as long as it's 25% um, slope or less. At least that's an instantitis. They don't really like you to build on one in four slopes or greater. Um, all, you know, if they're meeting main building setbacks, you can build on a, you might be able to build on a pretty decent slope because 
uh, then you could use the main building heights and you wouldn't be limited to 16 feet because you know they're going to measure from the lowest point to the highest point typically or at least from the point of the ridge down to the grade line there so you may not be able to make 16 feet if you're on a sloped lot but if it's in the main building setbacks then making 26 or 30 is not a problem so i mean i in my Pradu plans i have raised floor foundations which would be ideal for a sloped lot because you wouldn't have to do a grading plan perhaps you would just do your footings with a step footing on the sides and then your house would have a could have a decent underfloor area so that was one way to do it and then, you know another way is to do it with posts and piers and then float the whole thing above the grade um, the one that i showed you that's the spec house with a adu underneath it that's going to need a full grading plan and go through the whole grading plan process but in Encinitas, um, they have something called a green building incentive program. So if you're doing a spec home, well, almost any project, if you say you're going to go lead or build it green certified, then you can get some things sped up, which is for a spec home builder, cutting off five or six months of holding costs is incredible. So that home is going to be going through the green building process. So. Okay, um, you had mentioned before we started recording about working also a little bit in the Temecula area. Are you currently taking jobs up in Temecula? Um, they'd have to be on the sizable side for me to do that. I mean, I, I am aware of the County of Riverside. Uh, I work in their process. Um, they have a pretty good digital submittal setup. Um, a lot of these ADUs and projects like this, I will, I know the basic cost, so I'll give a fixed fee. If I was doing a decent sized project in Temecula, I might want to do more like time and materials. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a granny flat is connected to the main house while an ADU has a separate entrance and parking. Is that correct? Uh, no, a granny flat and ADU are basically the same thing. Um, granny flats is a slang term for it, I would say. Um, for a long time, the city of San Diego wouldn't use the term ADU or accessory dwelling unit. They would use companion unit, but they finally switched over recently. So, um, uh, yeah, that's an ADU is the same as, um, as a granny flat. Yeah. Okay. And is it the separate entrance and parking that makes it, that designates it as an ADU or granny flat? Um, even the junior ADU needs an, its own entrance from the outside. So I don't think there's any physical thing that change, changes a granny flat to an ADU or vice versa. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, yeah. Okay. And let's see, Cardiff twin homes or duplexes are utilizing an attached unit to maximize square footage. Since it is attached, can you rent the main home and JADU separately? Yes, I've actually, honest, our firm has four twin home projects going on right now. And um, I think two of them have ADUs. And yeah, the ADUs are usually in the basement. They're usually a studio ADU in the basement of the AD, of the uh, twin home. And you can have, so you can have four units on those and you can rent them separately. There is some talk in the future that the state might find a way for you to sell the ADU separately from a house, but I, that'll be surprising to me if that happens. Um, you'd have to, it would throw all the cities into a conundrum because they somehow would have to figure out how to condoize these things. And I don't know. So no one's really figured it out yet, but they've been throwing it around in the state legislature and stuff. So. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we'll wrap up there um, since we are hitting at about 1130 right now. So for everyone okay. else, if you do have follow-up questions or need to contact Bart, we did put your information there in the chat. Um, and thank you so much, Bart, for your sure. time today and educating us on ADUs. All right. Thank you. It was a pleasure uh, providing you with the information. Thank so. you so much, Bart. Sure. Thank, thank you, Bart. Bart. I appreciate your help. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. No problem. Bye. Have Bye. a great day. Bye.